Have we ambushed the word entrepreneur? Yes. What is an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is a self-sufficient individual or, or set of individuals who work for themselves okay. and then you know provide a product or service for a particular audience. Mm. That's it. That, that, that's what it, I would like to make it fancier for you, but unfortunately, I'm not one of these people who has to dazzle you with bullish. I speak real plain. Sorry. I know you're not used to that. If you're alive, subscribe. Uh, man, I want to I wanna uh, thank some people first. Uh, shout out to Auntie Pig. Piggy came through from Cleveland, had a great story. If you didn't, if you didn't check that episode out, you really need to check that one out. Asian A, Atlanta, hey man, Atlanta, like um, I'm trying to get into Atlanta algorithm. So if you're from Atlanta and if you want to do something with me, like hit me up and let me know. Like I want to get, I'm trying to. You guys are trying to take over the media, and I want to be in there with y'all. I'm from Cashville. I want to be in there with y'all because I'm I like Atlanta. But I want to, um, and before I, I introduce my guest, first of all, make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you guys uh, like. Make sure you guys get me, get me an algorithm. Like, give me a comment. I talk back to you. But I want to talk about something real quick. Like, it's so many times in your life where you just happen to live. You know what I'm saying? And, like, for me, the, the this season, like, it's just a, it's just a magical season for me. And um, I've been an L.A. Laker fan since I was a kid. I cried when, when they said Matt Johns had AIDS. I'll never forget when he announced that he was retiring. I really, I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? I, I cried. And um, when I seen Bronny get, get uh, drafted to the Lakers, uh, quit hating. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says this. The Bible says, uh, train up a child in the way they should go, and when they get older, they won't depart. That's right. The Bible, look, the the, the Bible talks about um, raising money for your kids, kids, kids. And um, this is the problem I got with this because I wanted to get, I got my guy here. I got the bully here today. You know what ah. I'm saying? I got the bully here today. But this is what I, I wanted to, um, why do we think backwards as in, we ain't working for our kids. <laughs> Whether you think my my kid deserve it or not, if I have worked hard enough for him to deserve it, he did. I I don't care what you say. He gonna get it. And and we so we we so messed up in in certain communities. It's like it ain't fa no, it ain't favoritism. His daddy done worked harder in the NBA than he's worked in his regular life for his kids to deserve the best. And, and, and that's why I got the bully here today. I got the bully here for this, and I call him the bully. He the business bully, but I call him the bully because of why are we so disconnected on making sure our kids got what we think they should deserve? Uh, bro, like, I'm going to tell you straight up and down, I think it's the fact that we got this real selfish, self-centered culture that is marketed to us. We don't think generationally. Yeah. Like you hear a bunch of people running around here talking about generational wealth, generational wealth, but they ain't got no goddamn life insurance. Ooh. So the idea of setting something up for your children is foreign. And when people like myself or Dame Dash begin to speak about these things, people look at you like you're crazy. They look at Master P like you're crazy. Like, why are he doing cereal? Like, why are he setting up ice cream? And why are he doing yeah. things, you know? Yeah. Because he got children. And them children will have children. Like, it, it's about a legacy. Like, I stopped playing for my first name a long time ago. You know what I'm saying? Like, I tell people all the time, like, I want my last name to mean something. Okay. We don't get that. Yeah. You know, that it, it, it stops at this one generation, and that's that. You know, we don't we don't well, think. Okay, so um, we know that we came from a long generation of mm -hmm. unbelievers. I want to ask you this first yeah. because uh. This is just kind. Of, this is the kind of question that I just like to know. Sure. And it really don't have nothing to do with religion, but it do. Like, what do you claim? Like, what if if if, if, if we're using God, everybody got the okay. I believe in this, this, and that. Before I kind of start a conversation with you, because you want some other type of stuff. 
You know what I mean? Like yeah. you on some real, yeah. because some people on some faith and some people on some, uh, my people believed in this. What do you actually believe when it comes to God himself? <sighs> okay. I believe that God is the most powerful being in the universe. He created everything, the heavens okay. and the earth. And I believe that I am redeemed through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Okay. Simple, simple. Here's That's it. Look, look, look. See, look. Everybody can't keep it simple like that. This person, somebody, oh, yeah, I believe this. Okay, look. <laughs> you made it plain and simple. Yeah. And now um, we can get into the conversation. Sure. When we're talking about uh, building businesses and when we're talking about wealth and generational wealth, like, how do we know who to trust to listen to and who not to trust? Okay, so. Who, how do we know who to trust? So, okay, here's the thing. I tell people all the time, a lot of these gurus out here, like they substitute teachers one day and then all of a sudden they, they're they business marketing experts the next and I ain't yeah. never seen you build no business. Okay. If your business is just your podcast and that's all you've ever done, if you're, if you're a podcaster for the sake of being a podcaster, cool. But exactly. if you're a podcaster acting like you're an entrepreneur, yeah. I'm going to need to see some receipts. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. who's families are you taking care of like what have you built outside of this to tell people about business uh -huh. you know what i mean um that's one two you will always know the tree from the fruit that it bears where they at though okay so if i am listening to somebody saying hey this is what we're doing this is how you make it this is how you get to the next level like how do I actually know you're doing what you're telling me? Because if, if we go back to the Bible, the Bible, right. Bible say, do as I say, not do as I do. Right. Here's the thing. And so for, for you, how, how are you like, okay, this is what it is. How do you prove to me? So here's the thing. There's not a week where you can go on my Instagram and you don't see me shout out a client. You know, I, okay. got, I got clients on the red carpet. I got clients that deal in photography. I got clients that help homeschool mothers, you know, homeschool okay. mothers create a curriculum for their kids. Like if all you focus on is yourself, if you are opera singer and it's me, 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 red flag, number one. Number two, if you got to show people what I call the little mermaid mindset, which is look at my stuff. Isn't it neat? Yeah, like yeah. if you got to show everybody your, your damn, um, your, your, your fancy car, your alleged rented Airbnb house, or even if you bought the house legitimate, off of the funds that you generated from scamming these folks because you ain't never really built nothing. Yeah. Like, that tells me everything that I need to know. The other part of that is I should see you doing the thing you claim to do. Uh -huh. So for me, for a long time, what I would do is I would do live events. Okay. And in those events, like I have a, part, I have a partner resort in Thailand, right? Uh -huh. So the way that my deal is set up with the resort is like I can give away vacations. And so I would tell people, listen, you bring me your problem. I don't want to know nothing about you. I ain't never met you. Nothing's in my ears. Like nobody's feeding me information. My phone and stuff is off to the side. You tell me what your situation is. I'm going to help you fix it yeah. on the spot. If I can't help you fix your situation, you're going to Thailand on me. Okay. And I did that for like three, four years. Guess how many trips I gave away? I mean, zero. Okay. Because like I do the thing that I say that I do. And I don't need to convince you of that. Well, okay. So, so what crowd can you you actually help? Because you we understand like when you get into business, mm -hmm. like business is actually just business wherever you you know what I'm saying wherever right. you're going wherever you're going. And so, okay, if you're in real estate, but you know business, and I'm in podcast, how can you help me? Right. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just I'm talking about me. I'm just saying, but how can you like? Okay, this person it ain't got to be podcast. Okay, this person is doing trucking, but he's in business. How can you help this trucker get to the next level in his business? Okay, so the thing of it is, everybody has a one track mind. They focus on one particular thing, and they yeah. if I'm a trucker, I'm focusing on trucking. Mm -mm. Yeah. They don't think about all the things that surround trucking. Okay, right. So the first thing is trucking in and of itself is a culture. Right. Mm -hmm. You're on the road for a l long time. You need to make sure you have a good relationship with your dispatcher. If your dispatcher isn't actually somebody employed by you, do you own your truck? Are you leasing your truck? Like there's all these different things like, that yeah, need yeah. to happen. No, there, yeah. Right. So then <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you, like, I don't know how deep you want me to go. But no, you let, 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 let right. roll. I'm ready to roll. So <laughs> the other part of that is people don't understand when they're first getting into trucking, the things that, you know, after you've been in it for a while. 
you know, like if you're running this particular route, you know, these are the places you need to go. These are the places you need to stay away from. These are the best rest stops. This is where you should go. This is what you should get. Then the fact that you could create all types of merchandising and all types of products and supplies for people who are on the road so they don't have to get hit with the exorbitant truck stop prices is a particular thing. Also, everybody and their mama during the pandemic was like, go get you a truck. Go, go start a trucking business. <laughs> yeah. And most of that shit is gone. It's flopped. It's over with. Your PPP done ran out and everybody done fell, fell for the scam. So now it comes down to I'm really doing this. This is how I'm doing it. Let me document what I'm showing you in real time from the cab. You know, this is what this looks like for me. These are the things that I use. Even if you keep it simple and say, listen, I got an affiliate account with Amazon. These are all the products I'm using. You go ahead and you buy these products off of Amazon. They kick me back a little bit, but keep the content going. Have we ambushed the word entrepreneur? Yes. <laughs> The, the same way that was a there was there was I'm saying for me, what is an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is a self sufficient individual or, or set of individuals who work for themselves okay. and then you know provide a product or service for a particular audience. Mm. That's it. That, that that's what it, I would like to make it fancier for you, but unfortunately, I'm not one of these people who has to dazzle you with bullshit. I speak real plain. Sorry, I know you're not used to that. Okay, I I wanna um uh, I wanna go back sure. I wanna go back to 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 the uh Debron thing yeah like um for you because yeah. I wanna I wanna hear your thoughts what was your real thoughts on when you when you first saw his son get drafted and and going to the Lakers like what was your real thought on it my real thought was okay from a business perspective I said that's three point five billion dollars in free marketing the Lakers just got themselves that that was my first thought. My second thought was LeBron just made history again. Whether you like him or not, <laughs> whether you like him or not, <laughs> it is the business bully. <laughs> I don't care if you like him. Listen, yeah. there are people who didn't like Ric Flair and love Dusty Rose. There are people who who liked Hulk Hogan and didn't like the Ultimate Warrior. It does not matter. You're going to watch. Can I? And I'm can sorry, I give him this? Give it to him. Can I, can, this your can show? I, can I give? No, I just want. Can I give him this? Yeah. Is LeBron the first basketball player that ever spoke up on politics and spoke up for us? And I haven't never saw a player do it. And, and if they talking about the greatest player, like, uh, 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 are you just talking about on the court or you talking about off the court or on the court? Um, he has done phenomenal off off the court. Yeah. He had, he has embraced the the uh the culture mm -hmm. as we would say. Yeah. Um. Who are you following? If, if if somebody is asking, we need somebody to lead the black community outside of you, give me somebody who we're following. David Banner. Who I like him. Yeah. You said a good one, and why? I have known David. My, my relationship with David Banner is old enough to drink. Mm -hmm. Shout yeah. out to David Banner. I met David Banner here. I met David Banner in Nashville, Tennessee. He walked into the studio, and I was thrown off because normally – what happens when you come into the radio station, the record reps come and they put up their little posters and whatever, and they like to prep the room, whatnot. And I see this big honking Negro come in and he got a, he got an industrial, like the staplers, you hit the light pole. You know what I mean? It's yeah. 03. So he come in with the stapler. He, ka -dum, ka -dum, ka -dum, ka -dum. And I look, I said, David Banner. He said, yeah. I said, you hanging up your own posters. He said, if I, if I'm, if I'm not hanging up my own posters, I don't deserve to have them. And I like at that moment, I knew he was different. I knew he was different. And when I tell you, I, I'm not going to because my relationship with that brother is extremely sacred. Like we have a bond. He is as close to my brother as my own brother is, God rest his soul. His performance. The man thinks about everything on a level that like a lot of y'all ain't even ready for. And he takes and bets on himself in so many different arenas. I don't think y'all realize how many films that man has done. I don't think y'all realize how many films that man has scored. I saw that man take a backflip off a 615 bar. Yeah. What's the difference between him and Charleston White? <sighs> I think Charleston White goes for the sensationalism because you Negroes don't necessarily like anything that's not sensational. And when I say that, I'm not saying that like I'm above it. I'm saying that from a humanity standpoint, he understands that again, 
Like, even Eminem said this. I created a monster, but nobody wants to see Marshall no more. They want Shady on chopped liver. So if you want Shady, this is what I'll give you. Like, nobody likes it when I'm like, well, you know, you could just go down and go to the IRS and get yourself an EIN number <laughs> and then, then take that and then go and open up a business bank account and do that. I got to, like, I got to tell you to smarten up, Buttercup, and, like, you're being ridiculous. You're playing yourself. Like, because that's the only way people will respond to things. With Banner, Banner understands that no matter what he says, okay. there are people who are automatically going to get it and resonate. There are people who are going to get it because they like what they see when they see him. And there's people who are going to get it because they like his music. And then there's people who are going to get it much, much later. Mm -hmm. Any way you slice it, he's still on the path of doing things for our people yeah. in a way that's actually tangible, whether they understand that's what he's doing or not. What's the difference between him and Kanye? <laughs> I think it's a different level of upbringing, right? I think Banner coming from Mississippi, like when you from the South, it's a, di it's like, a different, it's a different, okay. it's a different it's culture. It's a different, it's a different, you know, I get that, you know, and, and I think with also, is with, Kanye fighting for some like on the same level is, is Banner as we, you know what I mean? Is, is, is it wrong to like Trump? Like if, you know what I mean? Just, I love Trump. What are you talking okay, about? Okay. I'm just, I'm, I'm, no. I'm asking because I'm a businessman. And the thing with our people that has held us back is we get personal about things we shouldn't get personal about. I think when you want to have a popularity contest, take your ass back to high school and vote for the homecoming queen. I want a president. Okay. And the other part of that is I don't want somebody to play in my face. I want to know where you stand on stuff when it comes to the actual tangibles. I don't care about your rhetoric. I don't care about you hanging out with Cardi B. I don't care about you playing Desposito. I don't care about your fake ass wanna be black woman talking about Joe, we did it, Joe. What are you doing for my people? Cause you the same dude that locks one out of three of my brothers up in prison in their lifetime. You created that. Stand. I got a show. I got a show. And, 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 and I, I, I hate to, uh, I, I, I hate to go in this because we want to kind of stay on a it, on listen, a good loop, you know what I'm saying? But I, 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 um, listen, I have a whole show bro. up about that. This is this is this this is my question for you. Mm -hmm. Like, are we voting for the person that we like, or are we just voting for like, okay, we don't like you, so we just vote against you because we don't like you? You're voting for the best marketing plan that they can come up with in order to exact your fear. That's it. You're, you're voting to stay safe you're not voting your interest because most if you ask people right now okay name me name me five things joe biden is running on go oh uh, prills in one of them he <laughs> no no, no i'm talking about what he's campaigning for not what he's done Oh, oh! I thought you. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah, see what I mean? Look, like you, 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 you know. I'm gonna tell you the sad thing for me. Mm. Um, this is why I don't like the Dems. This, I'm gonna tell you the exact reason why I don't like them. Here we go. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you why I don't. Talk I'm to gonna me. tell you why I don't like them. Talk to me. Vote for Trump. Um, I'm gonna tell you why I don't like them. Yeah, because they'll tell you a lie in your face and just expect for you to believe it because they feel like y'all owe us because we mm -hmm. are the Democrats. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all see that Joe Biden is half gone. <laughs> I was watching that debate <laughs> last night, bro. I don't want to date the show, but I, I was watching it. Lab. I was like, this kid, I thought it was an SNL know, skit. It, it, it's like a, it's, it's, this it's kid, like a skit. It's, I was like, it's this is like, <laughs> I'm like, yo, whoever they got playing Biden is nailing this motherfucker. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like, yo. And then like Trump, Trump was like, yeah, um, I don't know that last part. Of no, I can't think out nothing this man just said. It was, um, it, 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 it was, um, that's why I don't like the Democrats because mm -hmm. they'll come on the next day and act like he just had a bad night. Instead, you know He's what got I, the flu. You know what I can respect more. Uh, I can respect more. They saying, "Hey, yeah, we know he ain't there, but we kind of doing it, right?" Because everybody knows I can respect what it is. That. I can, but I can respect that more if you just say that. But, but for you to be in our face lying mm -hmm. and acting like he's cool and everything is good, yeah, but they they automatically know that between eighty eight and ninety two percent of us are automatically going to vote. For this man, regardless of what this man absolutely did. This is the same dude who said, well, you know, poor kids can learn just as good as white kids as if the majority of poor people in America aren't white. Um, this is the dude <clears throat> who said, I don't want my kids growing up in a racial jungle. 
His vice president called him out on the fact that she was the second group of kids that were going to be bused, and he was against that because he is the product of segregationists. Strom Thurmond, Robert Byrd, segregationist Klansmen. Like, at what point do y'all, like, not even bother to research? Because your feelings are in the way of the facts. And then my personal favorite, what I love that, that the Democrats do is they pay people to make them look like they're doing good stuff. Like, I'm sorry, when the last time you laughed at a D.L. Hughley special? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Look, it's two people that's with the DMs and they getting paid. I'm going to tell you, look, it's two people getting paid some real good money. Real good money. I'm going to tell you two. I want to know who your two is because I got my two. <laughs> you can, who your two? You can, who your two? Hey, look, DL and Plies, boy, y'all get some good ones. Plies, y'all get some good money. Who y'all? Hey, Plies, boy, get what? I always knew you were good at what you do. Plies has a business degree and doesn't talk like that. Michael Blackson's African accent is realer than Plies' country one. God. I'm sorry, when the last time Plies had a hit? <laughs> on this liquor oh so heavy for we can you like and don't get me wrong i've known plies for quite some time i'm not knocking him but l i gotta call bullshit bro like if you're not making hits how are you still maintaining this lifestyle you just plies, the best talk, uh, uh, ever. Hold, hold up i've been look i've been hit you plies i gotta hit him because I, I just gotta hit him hit him you was talking about 50 years and joe biden the one was giving them mm-hmm -mm. The same thing that you was rapping about, Joe was, that's your guy. Let's lock him up, Joe. That's your guy. Lock him up, Joe. God. Slide him on. But I'm telling you, man, like, D.O. Hughley don't do nothing. I ain't heard this man tell a joke in five years. All I've heard him talk about, every post is about how bad the orange man is. And let me explain something to you. I've gone to McDonald's. And I've got myself a Big Mac meal, and I never thought about how I felt about the person <laughs> handing it to me. <laughs> like, and then I got to ask a, a real question. Why does a multimillionaire care so much about poor people but doesn't have any type of charity? How many kids has D.O. Hughley sent through college that didn't come from his loins? I'm, try I'm trying to understand. Like, what are you doing other than running your mouth in the quote-unquote GED section, you know, and getting your female Negro minion? to sit up there and co-sign your bullshit. Like, what are you doing other than posting so much? Like, I think, for example, Russ Parr, um, the, the retired radio personality who I owe a great deal of gratitude to, he, I think he just absolutely loves the Democrats. I don't think he's bought and paid for. But D.L. Hughley implies to they me. They both, man. They got, they, bro, they good. Because like, it's just, it's just, no, old, like, there's no other it. posting. It's like, what, just... you know, there was a time when Plaza would be like, you man. I feel all good. <laughs> he used to make fun, fun little happy content. I'm like, oh, he probably getting some bread off of that. He ain't even doing a fun happy content no more. It's all about. I don't care if Joe Biden is is, is hooked up to an IV in a wheelchair. I was gonna vote for Biden. I'm like, what in the Steve Eden from Django is this shit? It, it's <laughs> what's the matter, boss? We sick. We. <laughs> I was going to tell a joke. I was going to rap with my brand new dentures. Come on, man. Come on, man. We got we to gotta get better at other people. We, we, no, we, we gotta, need to stop falling for this bullshit, but that's why nobody takes us seriously. I did the rally for reparations with Tariq Nasheed, Reza Islam, and my good friend, Vicky Dillard. That's my guy, Tariq. Ooh. Hey. hey, look. He can do it, too. Listen. We're going to put Tariq right there beside David Banner. Shout out to Tariq. Tariq is killing it. But the thing with Tariq is people are like, well, you know, he did the Mac lessons. He did the pimp. Listen, I've made diss records on Dola White and Scooby, and they were my friends. <laughs> like, everybody got a pass. <laughs> yeah. Like, at what point do we not get past that? Yeah. And look, I ain't seen none of you raggedy-ass Negroes do a Hidden Colors 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Like, you, I don't like everything about myself. I don't like everything about Tariq Nasheed, but the shit I don't like is eclipsed by the shit I absolutely love and respect. So at some point, if somebody ain't perfect for y'all Negroes, all of a sudden y'all got all this criticism, but the people who are really fucking up, y'all just turn a blind eye to. We're not going to pay attention to nothing Kamala's doing. We ain't going to pay attention to nothing Joe Biden is doing. We, we ain't going to look at the mayor of New York. We ain't going to look at the mayor of Chicago. We're not going to do none of that. we just going, I don't know, these Democrats, it's all going to work itself. Do you think Joe would have picked her if she had a black husband? 
<laughs> no. I've been answered. Yeah. No. I just no. That's what I'm, you know, the, uh, um, they are so scared of the black people. Of course they are. That's why they keep trying to neutralize why? us. Uh, why? Why? Okay. So, J. Edgar Hoover with his closeted, partially black ass. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Do your Googles get back to me. Um, J. Edgar Hoover said the worst thing that could ever happen is that we give rise to another black messiah. Uh. Right? Martin scared the fuck out of them. Malcolm scared the fuck out of them. Medgar scared the fuck out of them. Huey Newton scared the fuck out of them. Who was right through that gap, though? And I ain't trying to, because I want you to keep yeah. on going. Who was right through the Mart and the Malcolm and was all of them, who was right through that gap? Because we're trying to, you know, guys, we we, we trying to figure out who was right. Everybody was right. That's okay. what I mean. Okay. Right? Shakespeare says, Think, second thoughts make liars of us all. Right? Martin was like, nonviolent, nonviolent. I have a dream today that my four little children. Like, okay, great. Content of your character, so on and so forth. But it's funny how nobody ever quotes the letter from Birmingham jail. It's funny that he, when he talked about the fact that they were making all these subsidies and, and grants and land grants for, for white farmers but weren't doing it for black farmers, they, they don't talk about that. They don't talk about the fact that Martin, in and of himself, was coming to a crossroads and told Harry Belafonte, I may have integrated my people into a burning house. So he realized that certain things that he was doing and certain things that he was being put up to do, and again, I'm not bashing Martin Luther King, when I say that, I have, I went to Martin Luther King High School for Christ's sakes. I love Martin Luther. I played Martin Luther King before. Like, yeah. I love so Martin, he Luther Martin Luther King. He liked Martin Luther King. He ain't trying to get right. in, in on. No, but what, what I am saying is Martin Luther King only became prominent because they propped him up. Here's why. If you go back and look, when he took over that church that he was, he was um, pastoring at, his prede- his his predecessor was a guy named Vernon Johns, and Vernon Johns was talking about group economics, and he built a store in the basement of the church. He had a garden for the community. He was doing things, and folks were like, we don't like that. We, we need somebody we can control. So they got him out, and they got themselves a young, very pliable, very um, impressionable, and, and you know didn't have any bad habits kid named Martin Luther King Jr., and they rock with him. People forget Martin Luther King Jr. was a genius. He... You know, I mean, he got a doctorate of like 15 or something crazy like that. Like, he was that work. Malcolm, oh, wow. Malcolm, you know, was Nation of Islam until he wasn't. Uh-huh. You know, when he went over to Mecca and realized that there were white Muslims wor- worshiping the same way he was worshiping, it changed his views on certain things. And so I think they both at some point kind of met in the middle. What did you put Farrakhan when it's coming, coming, coming in the mix of, because we, we're talking about Muslim and we're talking about... So what do you put Farrakhan? Because um, we've always been taught that Farrakhan is this big bad person. But once I studied on Farrakhan, he's trying to do what the black community needs. So what do you put him in that conversation when we're talking about these guys? They've tried to kill Farrakhan so many times it's not even funny. And he just keeps bouncing. I'm going to tell you what's ill about it. True story. And listen, Carl Reese Islam, if I'm lying, I'm dying. He was going to give an address in July of 2020. And that address was supposed to be on Fox Soul and Revolt TV, right? Mm-hmm. Fox Soul backed out of it. They've been blocking him from a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. He can't even get. Yep. You can't even really. Yeah. And so I think Revolt TV was able to put it on their YouTube channel, but not on their actual channel. Okay. I don't know the particulars. But Business Bully TV wrote, uh, put it up immediately with, with unfettered. Because I believe in what the minister has done. I believe in what the minister has tried to do. And I'm a. Okay, for lack of a better word, I'm a Baptist. You and know? the minister, uh, I'm gonna tell you something. He one of the best Baptist preachers uh-huh. I've never seen. Well, hold, 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 that's what. Hold, hold up, and, and, and we finna go. Yep. That's that's that, that's what I was going to. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I like? I, you know what I love about the Muslims? Mm. They also give it up for Jesus. They always say, "Hey, yeah. Jesus, thank him for his sacrifice." And I want you to keep going what we're talking yeah. about. But the minister, Jesus, that's what it is. Yeah. Religion going to kill everything, but yeah. shout out to uh, yeah. Farrakhan because he Farrakhan. always, he, they always say, thank Jesus for his sacrifice, mm-hmm. but go ahead. Yeah, but no, when you start to get to a point where you start to wake up too many of your people, they will either take you out or to try to neutralize you or they'll say you're an anti-Semite uh-huh. and so on and so forth. There's a bunch of books um, that the Nation of Islam have produced about the relationships between blacks and Jews and all those types of things. You can grab those and read those. And he's literally going to rabbis and this, that, and the third. He was like, tell me in here anything that's a lie. 
Yeah. And they couldn't. Yeah. You know, yeah. but we like we and that's what I love about Farrakhan, right? I feel like because I'm not a leader, mm-hmm. I can say certain things that he can't say. But I uh, love what yeah. he said. All yeah. you scared to death, Negro. <laughs> and a lot of y'all are, are, are so afraid to get canceled, just so afraid that, that you're gonna be looked at as an anti Semite. I I've lived the type of life where you can't really get me on a lot of those things. I was the youth president for a time of something called the National Conference of Christians and Jews. Okay. Ain't nobody going to call me no anti-Semite because I'm not anti-Semitic. But the people who get clicked in with that particular community, rappers, entertainers, mm-hmm. athletes, after a while, you they can kind of compromise those individuals up to your beloved LeBron. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, remember, LeBron was going to have everybody walk out. Yeah. And all of a sudden, uh, LeBron, hey, uh, yep, nope, it's, uh, it's Barack. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to need you not do that. All of a sudden. Okay, hold up. Real quick. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. Barack. Yes, sir. And I know that I, I've heard you talk a, a little bit oh, yeah. uh, about Barack. Mm-hmm. I want to give you my, my, um, my insight on Barack. Sure. Uh, from the get go, when Barack, Barack ever came in and was the president, this is what I said. I said he's a very good, inspiring person for our yes. people. Yes. Just to make it in that position. But what, what, what was what, what would you would have done in his situation? And what did he do, right or wrong? He he made it. <clears throat> One of the most brilliant things towards the latter end of chattel slavery that they did. What was about when he signed the gay bill? I was I was going to go there. I'm I'm getting there. Got, let, let, let me rock with you. Rock. I got you. I got you. All right. So one one of the things that they did in slavery was they would say, "Hey, we want this to be your plantation." And so, listen, this is Master Joe, and Master Joe has one particular way to do things, and he liked to whip and lynch and kill, and 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 we know y'all don't like that. But Master Bobby over here, he just wants to talk to you. He just wants to make sure that you're productive and you're effective. This, that, and the third. You know. Then you have these overseers, and the overseers they they look like you, they walk like you, they talk like you. But make no mistake, they work for Massa. Yeah. You had eight years, eight years to do something. Tr- Tangible for black people. Mm. Not Trayvon could have been my son. What happened in those eight years, right? Symbolism is a beautiful thing. I like representation. I think diversity is important. I think there should be a black president, a black president who's a foundational black American because when your daddy's from Kenya, who you ain't really had much of a relationship with, and your mom was from Kansas, and you were raised in Hawaii by your white grandparents, yeah. You didn't really get your black experience until you started, you know, being a community organizer in Chicago. Mm. So you're an African-American in the same way Charlize Theron is an African-American, in the same way that Elon Musk is an African-American, because keep in mind, he's half them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So for me, I wanted, I, what he did right was he's a phenomenal motivational speaker. Okay. He got record people to the polls. From a marketing perspective and a campaigning perspective, the way he utilized the internet and got people away from Facebook to come work on his campaign in order to make money nickel and dime grassroots, absolutely brilliant. Um, having, you know, rappers in the White House at an unprecedented clip, cool. Okay. That makes people feel good. Okay. But when are we going to get past our feelings? And yeah. when you look at it, what did we really get? I just, I think, I but just, I think we got ins- inspired. And, but I, I'm going to need Negroes to stop using these white people's talking points like they're, they're Jim Henson and they just put their hands up your little Kermit the Frog asses with this, oh, well, you know, he's the president of all people. He's not the president of black people. Well, that's funny because he sure enough made sure illegals had a path to citizenship who were already here but weren't born here but got here when they were like two, three, two, three months, two, three years old, whatever the case may be. Um, he made sure that he got don't ask, don't tell repeal. He got um, gay marriage, um, the, the law of the land, and by all means, good job. But you know what the gay people did? You know what the illegals did and, and their legal counterparts did? The one thing black people don't do, they cut the check and made demands. And they said, you going to vote? You, you going you gonna to rock with us? Or we ain't going to vote for you? So We don't do that. They, that's why they play you. So can he, he have a bigger voice now? He does have a bigger voice now. Who you think is running the country? Okay, never mind. When he speak, I I, I saw his tweet when he was uh, 
You did an interview and said straight up, yeah, if if I could get a third term, yeah, you know, we just need to get somebody in there and I could just, you know, come on, man. Would you ever vote for him? Not again. But you vote for him the first time? Of course I vote. Listen, when he was doing doing radio tours, like, you know, we would, you know, because I I was producing Ricky Smiley at the time, we would make sure that, you know, we had the right things and, you know, we'd feed him the right jokes, all that kind of good stuff. Because we really thought he he was trying to make change. Yeah, nah. First thing he did. But do you not think he tried? Do you not no, think he? I don't think so. You, you, you don't think he tried. You can know the tree from the fruit that it bears. Let me okay. give you some examples. Um, George W. Bush created those stimulus checks. Remember that? Uh-huh. One of the first things that went as soon as he got in office was them stimulus checks. Them, them stimmies went bye-bye. But you know what he did do? Even though people were over under in their mortgages, he bailed out the housing market. Then he turned around and bailed out the banks. Then he bailed out the car industry. He bailed out a bunch of millionaires and billionaires that have been fucking us since the beginning of their uh, of their inception. But yet and still, we didn't get no better. What did we actually get? And please miss me with, oh, well, he created My Brother's Keeper, uh, yet a program for black and brown and other people that really hasn't really done a whole lot tangibly, only for a couple of people. Like, I don't, like, I don't want Grand Slam home runs, but I don't want bunts either. And yeah, when people fact. give me bunts, you oh, know well, what I'm saying? Let, let, look, okay, let, let me ask you something. Sure. And so, you know, I'm a, um, I'm a big guy when it's considering the radio station. Yes, sir. Um, shout out Steve Harvey. That's my guy. Um, I go back and forth with Steve Harvey. You I, know what I'm saying? Like, one minute I'm a big Steve Harvey guy. One minute I'm like, a, yeah, I'm a Steve Harvey guy. But then, and, and, and you know, I, I, I think the radio station has fucking power sure. i think the radio station has more power still i know everybody's trying to downgrade the radio saying hey it's social media and all this and the radio station has power and you has you have you have worked for the radio station and matter of fact you have worked for the radio station in nashville tennessee yeah, absolutely and so what is the radio stations lacking when it's coming to the power that that they withhold when it's coming to our community because we know the radio station can play your song ten times, sure, and you can be the hottest thing in the world. Sure. And so, what what are the radio stations lacking? Why why was you there, and why did you leave? And yeah, I'll answer the first part, and then I'll answer the second part. Okay, just answer um, it on your well, own. The radio station misses, you know, genuine connection and community involvement. They they do just enough to be there, but these are corporate entities now. Okay. It's not like back in like when I first started. You know, in, in the late '80s, Jesus, that sound old. But when I first started in the late '80s, there was always some <laughs> little old man or some little old woman back, and you could just say, "Hey, I want to do this and third, and they write a check, and then it would it would happen. Yeah. Now everything's got to go through the the regional VP, the stand and third. And when I was here, you know what I'm saying? Like nobody, I I had to force other radio stations to play local music. I was the only dude playing local music. You're welcome. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. Tell his daddy. You're welcome. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm a northerner, and I am the first Southern Entertainment Award winner. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, before they had all these different categories and whatnot, I was the only personality of the year. I was that work. Ooh, that's me now, right there. Th- th- listen, I got a couple of them. <laughs> got a couple of them. <laughs> okay, let's and go. one of my most prized possessions are those, because it, it meant so much to me because this place embraced me in Shout a way. Shout out to SEA. Listen, listen, you, you can't take it from them. Shout out to Janera. Shout out yeah. to Infamous. Like, shout out to them boys. I love them to death. They never let me host the SCAs. I wonder why. <laughs> infamous and in Nero. Listen, in all seriousness, I, I think what's what's happened is I, I got into this business to inspire people. I got into this business to, to have a good time. And when it started being corporate and they wanted you to hit these types of benchmarks and they wanted to control everything about you, I was like, nah, forget that. Because I still have to be me. And I can't be me in your parameters. I got to be me the way that I, I need to be me. Thanks. Well, and thanks. now that I'm an agent for radio personalities, like the deals they be trying to, you might as well be a rapper getting a 360 deal. They want to own everything, name, image, likeness, email list, YouTube channel. They want to own all that. And I'm like, no, we're not doing that. And that's what it is. Nobody is advocating for the talent because they believe that it doesn't make a difference. But here's the thing. You'll go to one restaurant and go out of your way for, uh, for that restaurant because the people who serve you, 
are serving you in such a way. Even though this restaurant right down the street and they got the same type of ribs, it's not about the ribs. It's the experience and the service. And yeah. the people who are serving up the ribs in this case are the talent. The people who are introducing the 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 the, the records and and back selling the records and promoting the products, so and why, touching the people. So why 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 the people that's actually over the radio station? Why they ain't at least taking into account that this guy not only is he good at what he's doing, he's creative, he's gonna bring us business, yeah. and he's actually gonna add something to this station, right? Like, is it that corporate to where we can't get to that point? Because they'll find somebody to do it for cheaper. Okay. Like, you could be a thought pocket who is a quote-unquote Instagram models and has a booking email address at Gmail, and they'll give you afternoon drive. Mm. Or you can be a has-been who did one episode of Wild and Out, and then all of a sudden they're giving you a morning show. Did uh, Scooby deserve that street before anybody else in Nashville? You're asking, me a loaded, you, you're asking me a loaded question. Scooby. Had Scooby not, and again, like, I love Scooby. Had Scooby not passed, because what happens is people don't really pay attention into, to your work until you're gone. Mm -hmm. That's just what it is. I've come What's to up? realize One that when percent. I'm dead, y'all going to be like, yo, he was on. Some I do think Scooby deserved the street. He did just, deserve the just street. To, um, just, yeah. to, just to, yeah. just to clear, clear that it up. That wasn't the question. The question was, did he, did he deserve it before other people? I think C. Wiz deserved it before anybody. I, listen, I, I can't deny I'm sorry. That. I just think C. Wiz, I think we is. But regard, I just, I'm sorry. Listen, the thing of it is, I think Scooby deserved the street, yes. I think also people who know, like you and I understand the whole C. Wiz situation, C. Wiz, Daryl J, and like what, what that means for Cashville. Yeah. The different type of ball game. Like yeah. there were people when I came here who had to show me what Cashville was. Yeah. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? There's people who would like C. Wiz, Daryl J, Quanti Cash, you Thanks. know, Shout All Quanti. Star, yeah. you know, Pistol. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean, like it was a lot of people who were like, yo, this is, this is how I see it. This is what it is. You need to go here. You need to do this, yeah. that, and third, yeah. you know, um, it's a culture. So for people who understand that part of the culture is one thing. Then you have the people who understand the corporate side of things. And from a corporate side of things, they understood that brand. The Dola White and Scooby brand is still a brand yeah. that, that rings bells to this day. Uh, I love it. You know, Dola White, um, um, Dola White is 100% my guy. Oh, absolutely. Scooby is 100% my guy. This would look, yeah. this is one thing Dola and, and rest peace Scooby. They're going to tell you, I've always hired them. Yeah. Anytime I've did any show, right. I've always, my first go-to was Dola White and Scooby and C. Wiz. It, it, to, to, to me, it's like they was like together, like, Wiz, what are you doing? Dola, what are you doing? He might be booked. It's, it, it, it's them too. So, yeah. um, because it, it, everybody know Dola, Dola yeah. and Scooby is, is, is my guys. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, we ain't going to never get that confused. No, and like people like the, the audience always thought we had beef. What y'all don't know is we would go to the cooker. Right, like when it was time for us to negotiate our contracts, oh, man. he would sit in the back of the cooker with one nobody. Y'all remember remember the cooker that had the fling team? Like, come on, Let, man. Of course you do. So anyway, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> so Stop we it. would we would sit. And the, there was one on Nolan what, what what one on Nolan Road too? Yeah, it was I one do. off Nolan's Road. But I'm talking about the one that was downtown. And we would sit in a booth in the back in the corner in the dark and be like, "Yo, how much they give? Oh, they give me sixty grand. All right, cool." Get forty out of them because it was two of them. It was only yeah. one of me. So yeah. I'm like, yeah, no. And it's that so I'll be like, yo, Dolo White School is getting this much. And you see how much I'm doing? And this I thought you only mixtapes out of the soul. And da -da -da. And, and like the whole time. So anytime you'd be out, I'm like, I hate you. Like I we do so I would call, I would call their radio station while they're on there, like, hey, it's Taz, y'all good over there? Click. <laughs> like, but we were having fun the whole time, and everybody thought we couldn't stand each other. Man, we loved each other. Like th them, them my family, man. Taz, um, mm -hmm. what's your overall goal? in life when it's considered the black community? The thing of it is, you're not, like, let me explain something to you. This ain't, this ain't the Grinch. Like, it's not going to be a situation where one day, you know, racist white supremacists are going to just have their hearts changed overnight. It's not going to happen. And I know that they tell you, oh, you shouldn't be a capitalist because capitalism is bad. No, it's not. Do you know what communism is? Communism is bad. If you are in a free market economy, you need to be doing everything you possibly can to make money and build businesses. Dr. Claude Anderson, no relation, wrote a book. I called love Dr. Claude Anderson. Power Shout out to Dr. Claude Anderson. Shout out to Dr. Claude Anderson. And yo, get the black history reader. If you haven't gotten that book, go get it. It's going to change your life. 
But the thing with Dr. Claude Anderson, he says, you should be ashamed that your child has to go outside of your neighborhood for them to have to get employment. And he's right. And the thing of it Sounds is. like the LeBron thing. You ain't got to go. You ain't got to go. But the other part of that, you can say whatever you want to say about that. But Bronny James is showtime. Look at his skills. He deserves to be there. He was going to get drafted whether let, his daddy was LeBron James or not. Let me say this. Let, 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 let me say this. Sure. I have to uh, say, I, I got to gotta, I gotta cut my heart on this. Here we you go. mean to tell me you think the GOAT LeBron James going to let his son fail? Um, That's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to take care of your children. You know why I respect the business bully? Why is that? Because I haven't even followed the business bully that long. I've been knowing Taz that. See, when they say Taz that, I've been knowing forever. I'm Nashville. Yeah. I've been knowing. I'm, I'm, if, if I don't know you, you ain't from Nashville. That part. But this is what I, I respect, like. You could actually take a tool and make it work. Right. See, everybody like look at like, oh, well, um, it don't matter if if Bronny just working for the right. be seen. Right. It don't matter if he just working to bring more insight on the LA Lakers. Right. He don't have to be the greatest player to bring something to the team. That's it. And so uh, I've always, I told my daughter the other day, like, you have to be one of the best on the team. That's it. And the best on the team ain't always the greatest scorer. Mm-mm. It ain't You ain't got to be the greatest blocker. But guess what? Whatever you do, you're the greatest at, you're the at it. You're the greatest at it. You, you know what I mean? Dennis Rodman led the league in rebounds. <laughs> ain't nobody ever said Dennis Rodman Dennis right up there Robin. with my... Listen, he, there, there, there's, there's a place, you know, for Scottie Pippen. Say whatever you want. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You don't have to be Jordan. You just have to be dope at what it is that you do. And people don't understand that it is a team effort. Yeah, I mean, like, go watch the Power Rangers. I'll tell you anything you need to understand about where you need to be in Go watch the Ninja Turtles. Listen, (laughs) even better. Because each one of them had a place. Go watch the Ninja Turtles. One was a a peaceful leader. One was rambunctious. One was silly. And one was a genius. uh, And I want to ask, because I my God, we, we friends now. See, I be making new friends on the, on, on, on the pod. That That's what they don't the be understanding. This is more about a relationship than anything. And so we want, and I want you to get look in the camera and tell mm-hmm. them, we want to know what do we need to do as a black community to start being more like, you got this power, I got this power, and we just going. I tell people all the time, there's a bus, and it's going to the future. The problem with a lot of black people I run into, and I'm not saying this is all black people before y'all start with your comments and your Love bullshit. It. Fuck the not all police. I said what I said. Yeah. The problem with most black people, in my less than humble opinion, is that everybody want to be the one driving the bus. Oh. Somebody got to gas the bus. Somebody got to tune the bus up. Somebody got to change the tire. Somebody got to change the tires. Somebody got to put the luggage under the under the belly of the bus. Somebody got to make sure everybody got snacks. Yeah. As long as the bus gets there. Why do you give a fuck who gets off the bus first? Why do you give a fuck who's driving the bus first? You know, like, why can't we just get on the bus collectively? Well, one of the main reasons is we won't throw out our trash. Indians keep their trash in slums. White people keep their trash in trailer parks. We keep our trash upstairs in the bedroom when we start a plate under the door. Wow. And y'all continue to make excuses for mediocrity because you think that that's okay, and I'm telling you it's not. I'm not saying everybody's got to be the best at everything, and I know y'all going to say, well, everybody can't be a business owner because your dumb ass don't study the tax code. If you understood that this was a corporation and you played the rules the way the rules need to be played because you would understand the game better, you would realize that having a business gives you certain, and I'm not a tax professional, so go see a, a, an accountant, yeah. but... It gives you certain protections and it allows you to do certain things that would make it easier for you to generate generational wealth. The other part of that is you're broke on purpose. Now, let me let me under let me help you understand something. What's the what's the coolest brand of sneakers? Oh um, Nike. Who said? I guess the people. No, the people didn't say some. some I don't even have it on Nike. I got on Reeboks. You got on Reeboks. Right? You know what I'm saying? I well, got on. I got on Nikes because they're comfortable. And okay, I always, but I'm just saying if, if I'm gonna if, if, if you want to say, say the keep coolest it brand, you got on Nikes. You know what I'm saying? All day. If I'm gonna say the coolest brand, right? But here's the thing: all those decisions, all that cool shit, is decided in a boardroom that does not have you in it, does not have anybody who looks like you in it, and they make these decisions and they pump it to you. 
So you're spending money on shit that costs them five bucks to make. And then when somebody puts out something that costs five bucks to make, but was 15, like them Starberries, the stuff on Marbury, tried to do, y'all said, oh, that's corny. But did you or did somebody else tell you that? Or like, I don't know, when they put guns in the community, and y'all can call me conspiracy theorists, so you can go read something. You can go look at the Iran-Contra situation, how they would dump unmarked, filed off serial number guns into every single hood, including Nashville. Mm-hmm. You know, and they just say, oh, you know, I got it. They didn't have to say I just left the box out. I was just giving you, I was giving you a worldly answer. Mm-hmm. But if, if I would have gave you an answer for me, I wouldn't have even gave you a different, because I just, for me, um, mm-hmm. my life has always been about, I like the stuff that I like. That's it. I like the, like, I might, we, and anybody will tell you this, at my highest peak of money, you know uh-huh. what I'm saying, when we're talking about it, we mm-hmm. all if if you if you if you have ever had over a hundred thousand dollars, you have seen some money. Correct. You know what I'm saying? At my highest pick of money, like it was just like I just go in there and buy what I like. Like, uh, okay, shoot, it can be some pumas. They match this fit. Boom, come mm-hmm. on with them. It's, it's, and it's what I that think, is. Um, I'm gonna tell you something. My confidence has always been the highest it's gonna be. Right, because it's in you on a humble you. level. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't. I'm good. I don't. If you don't like what I got going on, it's fine. That's you know cool. what I'm saying? It's cool, and I don't even knock you for not liking what I got going right, on. You know what I'm saying? Different people. We, right. You just don't like, like what it. I like. It is, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And so, man, look, it was it was the business would have been here, and it, it was so good. But this is what I want you to do before we go. I want you to encourage the people that it's time for us to come on, come on, link it together. Yeah. It's time. It's just, it's just really, really time to start linking together. On we might not all be the same, but the mission can be the same. Correct. So I'm gonna say this to you. Me and Reza Islam are really good friends. That man is a car carrying Muslim. I'm a car carrying Baptist. Right. Okay. We might have spiritual differences, but he loves Jesus like I love yeah. Jesus. But the thing that we love above and beyond our spiritual differences, style and wardrobe, whatever the case may be, is we love our people. Yeah. That should be the thing. Do you love your people or are you a Kuna? Emmy is state, are you are you able to be bought or are you about this life? And when I say Kuna, I don't mean C double O N, I mean International Week. Are you a Kuna? <laughs> yeah. So the the part of that is we gotta start routing these coons out. We got to stop listening to people who are cosplaying like the bastard child of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Professor Griff from uh, Public Enemy and start really looking at what somebody is doing, not just what somebody is saying. Um, But I want you to feel like it is okay for you to fuck up. I have failed more times than I have ever succeeded, and I'm going to continue to fail. You learn nothing in success. You only learn from failing. But y'all will sit around. Like, it's Haley's comment, I'm going to wait until the stars align. And and once everything gets magically figured out, then I'm going to make a, You're dead. You are dead. We just ain't buried you yet. Fucking dead. You have to start moving. You will figure it out. Here's, here's your homework. I want you to go and watch the Infinity Saga, the entire thing, and watch Iron Man the entire time. Because when Iron Man realizes something's wrong with one of them suits, he scraps it, makes a whole new suit. He fixes the things that work. But in the process of fixing it, he gets rid of all the old things, like a snake shedding its skin, and he creates another suit. Even at the end of the first Iron Man, spoiler alert if you ain't seen the movie from 2008, at the end of it, when he's fighting Obadiah Stane, he says, yo, how did you account for the freezing? He's like, the freezing? And then he went, boop. Knocked him down because he already fixed the problem that he found that he would he didn't prepare for. The first suit is to get you out of the cave. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Everything that everything after that is to adjust as you move. But we get stuck in this one thing, and y'all talking about for those of you who are business owner, my business is my baby. No, your baby is your baby. If you look at your business as your baby, it's way too personal, and you can't ever scrap it. You can't ever sell it for parts. You okay. can't ever make adjustments. I need you to be okay. With that, also, doing it all yourself is stupid. Find the people who specialize in the shit you suck at and pay them. If you can't pay them, give them equity. I told my team I would make it greater for them later, and I'm fulfilling that promise today. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, I've had people rocking with me for 26 years because, like, okay, they're... um, Steve Harvey, 
had a homeboy named Rashawn McDonald. Rashawn McDonald was a phenomenal comedian, but he didn't have what Steve had. So you know what Rashawn McDonald did? He got himself to the back of the bus. He got himself and he put himself behind Steve. And he helped Steve with punching up his jokes and the business and, and being there for him. You know what I'm saying? Because he knew that that dude had it. Yeah. All of y'all ain't got it. Yeah. Whatever it means, all of y'all ain't got it. I don't care what your mama says. So find the people who do have it and then get behind them. There's nothing wrong with being Dennis Rodman or Scottie Pippen. There's nothing wrong with being Robert Ory. Hey, <laughs> get what? Robert Ory came through in the clutch. That part. And, and, and this is what is about this whole show today. Um, you don't have to be behind the mic to come through the clutch. You, you you don't have to be the game winner to come through the clutch. Uh, you can be the you can be the assist guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, if, if you're around a real crew and a and real people that love you, and real people that want to see you go, you gonna get your fair amount of payment anyway. This has been a great show. If you're alive, subscribe. Um. The, the business bully has been here, <laughs> and he'll bully you. But he's <laughs> bullying you for a better cause because he's he, he sees something in you that you might not see in yourself, and so he's bullying you to be your real self. Uh, if you're alive, subscribe. We love you. Make sure you subscribe. Yo, can I give a quick shout-out? Let's, get a, let's go. All right, first of all, I'm going to need y'all to do something. Number one, I'm going to need y'all to go ahead and hit the subscribe button to this okay. show. Right. First. Support independent black media because yes. they need support and, and support is okay. sharing. When I say because people are like, well, you said you don't want support. No, I don't want y'all saying support a black business just because it's a black business you want to hook up. I'm talking about support the things that are actually giving you information and giving people a platform Thanks. who otherwise wouldn't have it. So I'm going to need you to go ahead and subscribe. Then I'm going to need you to go ahead and click that notification bell. Then I'm going to go ahead and need you to uh, hit them comments. Whether you like what I say, don't like what I say, fuck Dave Anderson, fuck the business bully, fuck Taz Daddy, fuck all three of them. That's fine. Just make sure you put that there because that helps the algorithm so that this man can continue to grow and thrive and build, right? Now, if you're serious about building, scaling, growing your business, go to thebusinessbully.com forward slash without paid ads. I'm sick of everybody feeling like they got to dump a bunch of money and, and, and shove it up Mark Zuckerberg's ass in order to make money. I don't run ads. Facts. I'm not against ads, but there are ways to do it where if you're engaging your community and we'll go into all that, I'm going to hook you up with that. Plus, people don't know how to sell. If you don't know how to sell, you'll always be a slave. So I've given you what I call my seven-figure sales script. So you can literally use it, tweak it, Fix it, freak it, however you need to f- to fit your business. And I'm going to get that for you for free right now at thebusinessbully.com without paid ads. Yo, Ricky, I appreciate you so much for having me. Thank you for your hospitality. It's always good to hang out with a fellow SEA award winner. You know what I'm saying? I knew this show was going to be lit. I hope so. I don't remember shit I said, but I hope it was good. I remember. Shout also. out to Plies. Shout out, oh Shout out to DL. <laughs> I just want to I don't know no real rap can, can y'all tell me where I can get my DNC check so I can sell out too I got you know bills what? you know what <laughs> you know I might bag those DMs up if I can get the check y'all got them get. and then I might work on fake it you listen, know what I mean listen. but no nah, nah, I'm not gonna I'm, I'm not gonna playing. fake it um, I'm playing I would never um, I don't for me if I don't like what you got going on right I just don't like what you got going, I don't like on. What you going on I can't bag it up um See, I'm going to tell you something. If you don't have a conscience, you don't have a God. If you're last subscribed. <laughs>